Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and um, this video is a, is just a part 2 of our uh, lesson 2 in Applied Business Tools and Techniques. So if you can remember in our part 1, we discussed about um, the digital tourism, so you know, what is travel technology and then um, uh, what is the digital tourism ecosystem. So, and so if you can still remember that. So if you not, you can uh, watch the part 1 first. Um, I will provide the link on the description. Okay, so for this uh, part two, we will be discussing about the diffusion of innovation model. So, yun, so um, uh, as you can see or as you can remember, ayan, sige nga, balikan nga natin yung mga next part na, um, last, ano natin, last um, lesson natin. If you remember this, diba, this is the waves of IT adoption, in especially in the, um, uh, as a whole. Okay, and then this is the um, our internet and technology developments, lalo na here in the nakakatulong in tourism and hospitality industry. Now, ma'am, what is diffusion of innovation theory or model? So, we also have diffusion of innovation theory. Okay, so yun. So, here, this is just a model para doon sa, um, sa theory na yun. So, yun. So, it says... Um, we also have actually a diffusion research. Ang diffusion research naman, they are interrelated actually. Um, it examines how ideas are spread among groups of people. So, ang diffusion of innovation, so papakita niyan eh, kung paano nag-diffuse ang isang idea, ang isang innovation sa mga tao. Diffusion goes beyond the two-step flow theory, centering on the conditions that increase or decrease the likelihood that an innovation, a new idea, product, or practice will be adopted by members of a given culture. So if you can look at the model, so we have here innovators. So, yun, so these are the people, ayan, um, later we will, I will discuss each of this, but it says na 2.5% ng mga tao are innovators. Next are early adopters. So, 13.5%, uh, early majority, 34%. Early and late majority are equal. So, they are 34%. And laggards are 16%. So, let's see. Ano ba ang difference nitong sa bawat isa? So, yun, so, first, let's discuss what or who innovators are. Innovators are eager to try new ideas and prepare to take risks such as adopting technologies that may fail. Again, we are on a, um, a, a sa ID, a, IT adoption tayo, ha? So, yun. So, kung paano nag-transform from dati na kung naalala nyo, di ba, uh, uh, industrial revolution hanggang sa naging ano na tayo, parang naging um, digital world na tayo. And then, papunta tayo ngayon sa artificial intelligence, if you can still remember that in the lesson one. So, ang innovators, they are the one who are eager to try new ideas to the point sometimes na yung venturesomeness nila almost becomes an obsession. Ayan, ito yung mga innovators. They love or their interest is in new ideas that leads them out of a local circle of peers and into social relationships more cosmopolite than normal. If mababalitaan nyo, di ba, kung may mababasa din kayo, na there are some yung mga inventors natin Sila yung mga hindi nag-excel academically. Sila yung mga akala ng mga teachers sila they are failure. Akala nung, or yung iba talaga is parang nakitaan sila ng abnormality when they were young. So yun, so yun, and yun, most of the time, hindi sila into social relationships. So yun, so those are innovators. But again, hindi naman lahat. So yun, but so, some of them, if you can know or you can read via internet, so sobrang dami ng mga innovators na yun. Usually, ayan, innovators have substantial financial resources and the ability to understand and apply complex technical knowledge. So, yung mga innovators, dahil nga, di ba, sila yung ano eh, pwedeng ma-existing na, tapos inano lang nila, um, parang dinevelop lang nila or nag-create sila ng something new out of it. So, yun. So, while others may consider the innovator to be rash or daring, kasi, syempre, it's hazardous, Sobrang risk, nung sobrang laking risk ng kailangan gawin ng isang um, innovator, kailangan niyang i-take. 
ayan, si innovator, kahit na ganun yung alam niya, di ba, they are always willing to accept the occasional setback when new ideas prove unsuccessful. And this is according to Rogers, no, 1971. So, yun, so, if you can see, innovators, they are not perfect, di ba? So, they can, uh, they they know that technologies may fail, but they are um, parang brave enough to embrace that. They are brave enough to try that. So, if you can still remember, di ba, si Thomas Edison, di ba? Sabi nga, di ba, 10,000 times yung nangyari na failures bago niya ma-discover ang light bulb. Imagine that. And then I remember lang, um, I don't know kung pang ilang time niya na nag-fail noon. Like for example, 1, 000, yung pang 1,000 times na nag-fail siya, na, basta may time na nasunog yung laboratory niya. Tapos, some reporters are asking him parang, bakit po nagpapatuloy pa kayo, di ba? Kasi nasunog na nga yung laboratory mo. Tapos ang sabi niya, uh, yung eh, 1,000 times na nga po kayo nagkamali. Tapos ang sabi niya, um, he didn't see that as failures, as mistakes, as hindi na siya panalo or hindi na siya mag, um, or talunan na siya in that aspect. He just sees or he just realized 1,000 things or 1,000 ways kung paano siya um, hindi makakapa, um, kung paano hindi mapapailo yung light bulb. Imagine that. So, yun. So, yung 1,000 failures that we can see, ang pagtingin niya doon is those are 1,000 ways not to light the light bulb. So, yun. So, those are innovators. Imagine that, di ba? Ako, I, sometimes I do not see myself as an innovator because, again, innovators are 2.5% only of the population. Ayan. Yung mga meron talagang, um, parang meron silang enough courage to take that. So, yun. So, those are innovators. So, yun. So, again, this is the first part of the inno diffusion of innovation model. Next, let's discuss. So, after the innovators, so nakapag-discover na sila ng bagong um, gadget or bagong, basa anything about the internet or about the, kung ano mang invention yan. Next are the early adopters. So, who are these? Okay, they are the opinionated leaders who embrace change but are not as obsessive as innovators. Ayan. Ito yung mga, siko si innovators, diba, parang minsan it leads to obsession. Kahit na sobrang dami na nilang um, failures, talagang mag-go pa din sila, diba? Kasi you will never know kung naka-1,000 failure, failure ka na, mamaya yung pang-1,001, yun na pala. Yun yung mindset ng innovators. Pero yung early adopters, they embrace that change. Kunwari na as an innovator na ano mo na, na discover mo na yung particular thing na ito at bago, syempre hindi yan tatanggapin ng lahat. Yung mga early adopters, yung unang tumatanggap. Okay, early adopters tend to be integrated into the local social system more than the innovators. The early adopters are considered to be localities, ayan, versus yung mga cosmopolite innovators natin. And the, yung mga early adopter na mga tao, they seem to have the greatest degree of opinion leadership in most social systems. If you can still remember, there are some inventions na dahil sinuportahan sila ng ibang tao or they um, they provide advice and information yan, about this, about the innovation that you are, that the innovators are making. Change agents will seek out early adopters to help speed the diffusion process. So they say they said na sa diffusion of innovation model, na yung mga early adopters, they help the innovators para ma-diffuse yung particular information na ito or yung itong bagong invention na ito. Yung mga early adopter is usually respected by his or her peers and has a reputation for successful and discreet use of new ideas. So, those are early adopters. Parang kapag ka sila yung, alimbawa, yung pag mga simpleng scientist pa lang or yung mga inventor na, alam mo yun, hindi mo naman masyadong napapansin, di ba, simpleng tao lang. Pero kapag sinuportahan sila ng mga early adopters, which is they have their reputation, halimbawa yung government, di ba, merong particular na, um, alimbawa, merong particular na invention, na halimbawa, galing sa, um, 
sa province. Tapos nakadiscover siya ng ganitong gadget, ganyan. Tapos, uh, what will happen is kapag sinuportahan nyo ng government, those are the early adopters. Okay? They embrace the change. So, yun, they they accept that. Now, ayan, sila yung mas nakakatulong to diffuse. Okay? To diffuse this particular idea. So, yun, So, again, yung mga early adopters, they are 13.5% of our population. So, yun, So, it's according to the diffusion of innovation model. Next, um, people, type of people are the early majority. So now what, who are the early majority? So yung mga members of the early majority are, ayan, they tend to adopt new innovations before the average person, but will thoroughly research a new innovation before deciding to adopt. Ako, uh, personally, I think I am part of the early majority. Ayan. You tend to be skeptic first. So, what you will do, parang gusto mo lang makasigurado. So, what you will do is, you're going to, um, uh, you, you're going to research about it, you're going to ask other people about it, check the Google, di ba? So, yun, and, um, uh, they, most of the time, the early majority, they interact frequently with peers, ayan, with their friends, or with the society, but they are not often found holding leadership positions. So, ito yung, kung, kung, si, um, kung yung mga um, early adopters, most of the time, they are in the leadership, ang mga early majority, ito yung mga regular na tao lang, ayan, parang tayo, ayan. So, so but, um, you tend to, before you accept that particular, um, information, that particular innovation, magtatanong-tanong ka muna and you will do a research about it. So, yun. So, they, it is the link between the early adopters, and very early adopters, and mga late adopters. So, later we will discuss those. So, yung mga early majority, they play an important part in the diffusion process. Why? Kasi innovation decision time nila is relatively longer than innovators and the early adopters kasi nag ano ka pa eh, nag kukonda ka pa ng research mo, di ba? And you will deliberate some time before completely adopting a new idea. Seldom leading early majority adopters willingly follow in adopting innovations. So, ang early majority, for example, this is one of the best examples that we can um, think of. For example, yung Bitcoin. So before, I don't know kung kailan na-discover or kailan nag work or nag-start ang Bitcoin, but if you're going to look at it, halimbawa yung mga innovators ng Bitcoin. So yun, so sobrang konti lang nila. Yung mga nag-start ng Bitcoin, sobrang ano, um, alam mo yun, yung parang ang dami nilang pinipace na mga issues, ang dami kasi talagang mga, di ba, ang daming pwedeng magsabi na hindi totoo yan, di ba, cryptocurrency yan, so scam yan, mga ganon. So yun, so, yung mga naunang mag-adopt ng Bitcoin, eh, di ba yung sinasabi nila na yung mga, siguro kung mga 10 years ago ka nag-invest, siguro ang yaman mo na talaga ngayon. Ayan, kasi, why? It's a new idea. Okay, kahit ako, I am a bit skeptic about it. Why? Kasi, uh, it's a new idea. Wala pang nagsasucceed. Wala pang success stories about that, di ba? Wala, pa, wala ka pang narinig ng mga taong yumaman dahil sa Bitcoin before, kung mga 10 years ago. And puso ko yung mga scam. So, talagang, may isip mo talaga na ah, scam to, di ba? So, yun. So, those are yung mga medyo um, ah, skeptic about that. So, yun. So, and sinisiraan pa nila. So, yun. Yung mga early adopters niyan, it could be kung mga, ako, I have seen before those artists, mga artista na nag-invest. Tapos, I don't know, dati may nabasa pa ako ng mga artist na nag-invest. Tapos, biglang nawala yung article na yun. So, we don't know if, um, tinanggal ba talaga or it's legit or whatever. Pero yun, so yung mga early adopters, most likely sila yung sumuporta. And kung titingnan natin how, kung gaano na sila nag-succeed ngayon. So yun, why? Because they supported that that particular idea. Now, yung mga early majority, ayan, ako yung, or pili ko na sa late majority na rin ako kasi I am researching about it. So, I am asking people about it, paano ba yan, paano yung nag-work, paano ba yung kumikita, ganyan. So, those are the early majority. Pero, I think I consider myself as late majority when it comes to Bitcoin kasi I am still not investing about it. So, yun. So, 
Um, let's see what is the difference of early majority and the late majority. Again, ang early majority, they will do the research. Mas matagal silang mag-adapt kesa sa early adapters. Now, how about the late majority? Late majority will not will only adapt an innovation after the majority have tried it. Ah, sige, pag meron na akong narinig ng success stories about that. Ayan. And adoption may be the result of economic necessity or social pressure hanggang sa naging pangangailangan na pala natin yun. The late majority, ayan, they are the skeptical group adopting new ideas just after the average member of a social system have adopted it. So, yun, so, Pagka, alam mo yun, pag maraming tao na yung gumagamit ng particular technology na to, tsaka ako maniniwala na it's helpful. For example, um, siguro nung nag-start yung mga Asana, yung Trello, di ba? Siguro nung nag-start yun, some people might say, syempre yung mga innovators, sila yung nag, ano yan, yung mga early adapters, siguro merong, there are some person on the leadership that supported that, but there are some people na um, with, na, will say na, eh, pwede naman mag-calendar na lang, di ba? So, o kaya i-email mo na lang directly sa mga client mo kung ano yung gagawin nila kasi lalo na yung mga task management na software, di ba? Same, but, again, yung mga early majority, sige nga, try nga natin, let's, tingnan muna natin yung trial, di ba? I-research muna natin kung helpful ba talaga yan. And then, kapag yung mga early majority, inadopt na nila, imagine, ang early majority ay 34%. So, ibig sabihin, 34%, 13.5%, and 2.5% already adopted that. Ibig sabihin, almost half of the population na ang nag-adopt. Okay, tsaka lang siya, inadopt ng late majority. Okay? So, yun. So, um, uh, late majorities, um, yung adoption nila may be born out of economic necessity. Ayan. Nagkaroon ng pandemic, so kailangan talaga natin ng software that can connect us through the task management, di ba? And in response to increasing social pressure. So they are cautious about innovations and they are very reluctant to adopt until most others in the social system do, do so first. Okay, so those are late majority. And innovation must definitely have the weight of system norms behind it to convince the late majority. While they may be persuaded by about the utility of an innovation, there must be strong pressure from peers para maka-adopt sila. I remember, I don't know, uh, I forgot the name. Kung sino yung nag-invento ng um, computer. Okay? Ang, uh, ang goal niya or ang vision niya is for every um, house na mayroong computer. Okay? So imagine that. And then, nung nag-uumpisa siya, siguro mga 1990s, mga 1980s, 1970s, ganyan. Di ba sabi ng mga tao, ano ba yan? Di ba? Di naman natin kailangan yan, di ba? So, pero that is his vision. That, that, that is the innovator. Okay? Those are the innovators. And then, yung mga early adopters, siguro yung mga companies then ganyan. Oh, kailangan natin yan. Okay, let's try. They supported the idea of having computers. And then, yung early majority, they... They did their research, and then um, after the early adopters, in in after some time, di ba, medyo mas mahaba lang yung point of adoption nila sa particular innovation. Yun. Pero they, they also adopted that. And then, yung mga late majority, here comes the late majority, after nilang makita na, ah, oh, ginagamit na to ng mga uh, companies. So, they are using computer na. Ay, yung mga... Um, uh, um, Pwedeng sa early majority din, yung mga medyo mayaman-yaman na afford, bumili ng isang computer set, di ba? So yun, so those are part of the early majority. And then yung late majority, ayan. So for example, nakita na ng mga um, parents na, ah, kailangan pala talaga ng anak ko ng computer. At nagkaroon ng pandemic, nagkaroon ng online class, so kailangan talaga pala nila ng computer. It born out of necessity. Di ba? Nagkaroon ng pressure sa kanila ngayon to buy that. Okay, and imagine ngayon, we don't know, di ba? Pero siguro, 70%, I don't know, 50% or 60, 70, pero napakarami ng population natin ang nag-strive na magkaroon ng computer or laptops. Okay, why? Because it was born out of a strong pressure. Okay, so those are late majority. Okay, now, who are the laggards? 
Okay, these are the 16% of the, our community or our population. Who are they? They are the traditionalists and are the last to adopt an innovation because they are skeptical of change. Ayan. Hindi ko naman sinasabi na yung mga matatanda sa atin, they are the traditional ones. Pero most of the uh, older generation natin, they are traditional in nature. Why? They are the most skeptical of the new things that ha that are happening in the world. Why? Kasi hindi naman talaga sila comfortable, di ba? They live for a long time na hindi nila ginagamit yun. Di ba? So, so, most of the time, they are these laggards or they are these traditionalists. But again, siguro there are younger generations din na hindi, hindi na, may mga hindi rin talaga nakaka-adapt to an innovation. And ayaw nila ng change. Okay? Most of the time, loggers are localized to the point of being isolated compared to the other adopter categories. Okay? So, parang OP sila. So, yun. Kasi, at, ang, ano ni, ang modernized ni, pero skeptical pa din sila if it works or not. Diba? They are fixated on the past. So, yun. So, parang nakafix yung mind nila. Ah, kasi dati ganito lang yung ginagawa namin, di ba? Rimbawa sa isang uh, factory. So, meron ng, kung sa Philippines, di ba? May yung mga ibang machines natin are outdated na. Pagdating ngayon sa ibang bansa, sobrang ano na, parang mano-mano, parang dati dito kasi pagod na pagod ka pa kapag ka, nag-operate ka ng machines. Pero doon, pipindutin mo lang, hintay mo matapos and then that's it. Ganon. So, yun. So, Halimbawa, yung isang company dito na merong mga old or outdated machines, nag-isip sila na, ah, kailangan nating, um, ano hin na, kailangan na nating palitan ng, or i-upgrade yung mga machines natin. Yung mga laggards in the company, they will be the one who will say, huwag na, di ba, magka-training na naman tayo, bagong training na naman yun, eh, sanay na kami dito sa machines na to. So, yun, so those are laggards. Okay? They mainly interact with other traditionalists. Sila sila yung nagkakaintindihan. An innovation finally adopted by a laggard may already be rendered obsolete by more recent ideas already induced by innovators. Pwede nyo yung laggards, tanggapin pa rin nila yung particular innovation na ito, pero sobrang tagal. Up until na may ma-discover na na another, in-update na yung innovation na yon, tsaka lang nila na natanggap na kailangan na pala talaga nitong particular innovation na ito. They are likely to be suspicious, not only of innovations, but sa innovators din. Sino ba yung may gawa niyan, di ba? Ordinaryong tao lang naman yung may gawa niyan, di ba? And, yun, sobrang suspicious nila dun sa mga tao nila. Again, those are laggards. I don't say naman or I do not claim na, halimbawa ako, nasa early majority ako, nandun lang ako. Sometimes there are some innovation that I am that I am part of the late majority when it comes to accepting that. Why? Kasi hindi ko talaga, parang kailangan pa nating hintayin yung maraming tao na i-adopt yun bago ko siya i-adopt. I just want to share this. So, um, before, I was the one who don't want, who doesn't want to, um, to use PowerPoint during my class. Imagine that. Nasa face-to-face -face classes pa lang tayo nun. So, what I did is, I write on the board. Uh, that's what I want. Okay? So, yun. Pero I am not skeptical with the PowerPoint. I know that PowerPoint can help. But I am a bit skeptic if it is effective to the students. Okay? So, that is why I do not use that. And then, up until, uh, siguro naman nasa early majority pa din ako. So, up until, um, I, syempre, I saw in the other people na, oh, it's effective. So, they are using PowerPoint also. And it's, uh, um, kumbaga parang nag-gets naman na din ang mga bata if, uh, if I am using PowerPoint. So, yun. So, um, parang through and through, so, yun, nakikita ko and nadiscover ko na marami naman talaga natutulungan ang PowerPoint. And, ayan, imagine, ang dami ng mga presentations like Prezi and whatever, di ba? Ang dami nang pwedeng gamitin to present your um, to report or to present the lesson. So, yun. so therefore, di ba, kung laggards ka, traditional ka, so you will just think, ah, hindi, ito lang yung gagawin ko. So, andun ka pa din sa Cartolina, sa Manila Paper, so imagine that. But I am like that before. Okay? So, yun. So, but again, 
as time goes by, I learn to adapt the innovation. So that is just one example. So imagine, halimbawa sa hotels, yung mga pinag-aralan natin, kahit nga sa, uh, sa flights, diba? imagine kung dati hindi pa ma-adapt yung mga yung airplane, di ba? <laughs> hindi pa ma-adapt yun. So paano tayo makakapunta sa iwang bansa? Gagamit ka pa ba ng... ng ang tawag ito, barko, para na makapunta sa ibang basa, ay eh, sobrang tagal, di ba? So, yun. So, kung nasa luggage ka pa din, di ka pa rin sumasakay ng airplane up until now, di ba? Or hindi mo pa rin tinatanggap yung idea that you can go to other places using the airplane, di ba? So, yun. So, that is also part of the diffusion of innovation. Example, sa hotels, um, meron ng, uh, pwede na silang mag-book online, Diba? Pero dahil nasa late majority ka o nasa laggards ka, ayaw mo na ganun yung gawin. Diba? Natatakot ka kasi hindi mo alam yung technology na yun. So, ano pa din yung booking nyo? Walk-in pa din. Diba? Pagpunta nila doon, tsaka lang sila pwede makapag-book. Eh, sobrang tagal na nun. Diba? Yung late majority nga, in na nila yung online bookings. Eh, diba? O kaya naman, before, nung na-invent or nagkaroon ng mga online travel aggregators, di ba? Yung hotel mo, hindi mo pa nilalagay doon. Up until na-discover yung different um, websites, booking.com, Airbnb, di ba? Nung naging sikat yun. So, yun. So, yung early majority na-adopt na and then dahil sumikat na, in-adopt na din ang late majority. Naintindihan? So, yun. So, kung laggards ka pa din, up until now, you are, you are not using those websites to book your hotel or you do not accept that information. So yun, so do, that is the diffusion of innovation model. So now, we, we are down to our last topic, with, which would be understanding the digital tourist. Okay, so let's now see ano ba yung um, characteristics ng isang digital tourist. So we have here, ayan, so yung, uh, we have here high-tech and high-touch travelers. Okay? So, yun. So, um, it can manifest in your everyday, kung ano yung kar character mo in your everyday life, it could also manifest on how, on, kapag ka tumatrap, nagta-travel ka. In, as a traveler, you can be a high-tech traveler or high-touch traveler in your everyday life. You can be high-tech and high-touch also. So, for example, in your everyday life, high-tech ka. So, you love technologies. You, you love surfing over the internet. Um, you love using whatever um, website or basta kung ano yung ma-discover, sige, go ka dyan. So, you love and you enjoy technology. And when you travel, you also love and enjoy technologies, di ba? So, you book online, you download different mobile applications during your travel, you take pictures, you vlog, and whatever it is. Okay, ang tawag sa'yo, spillovers. Okay, so yun. So, spillovers could be positive, like, you um you can get opportunity from that. For example, technica, di ba? So, you can be a vlogger. So, you can you are a spillover. So, you are reading from that. Okay, so yun. So, that is the high-tech traveler and high-tech in every day. So, ang tawag sa'yo, spillover. How about high-touch? Ma'am, ano naman yung high-touch? Yung high-touch, there is an you always want um, a personal involvement. You have, you want personal attention or service. Okay, so those are high-touch individuals. So for example, in your everyday life, you want to, you always want, you love to relate with people. And at the same time, kapag nag-travel ka, feeling ko I am like this, you love having or engaging in technology while you are traveling. And tawag sa'yo, opportunity seekers. Okay, opportunity seekers in a way na kasi you want um personal attention. You want you love observing and relating with people. So, so you seek opportunities with that. Okay, so and sometimes you find opportunities with that. How about this? You are high tech in your everyday life, but you are high touch in your travels. Ang tawag sa yung compensators. When we say compensators, you give something else of value in return for something. Okay? So, so for example, you love surfing over the internet, pero when you travel, you love um, relating with people. You love talking with people kahit ibang race at ibang lahi sila, di ba? So, yun. So, you are a compensator. 
And sabi nga natin, when we are a compensator, you give something else of value in return for something. Pwede matuto ka from them, and then you also they also learn from you. So, and last one, if you are high touch and high touch, di ba? High touch ka in your everyday life. You love, um, per, um, you love relating with other people and high touch ka din when you travel, di ba? You are, ang tawag sa'yo, Luddites. Okay? Who are these? Sometimes, ayan, these are also loggards, which is, you oppose to new technology or ways of working. Okay? So, for example, you travel, hindi ka muna mag-book. Ang gagawin mo, kung mag-walk-in ka ito, a particular hotel, tsaka ka mag-book doon. So, that's it. that is a high touch. Okay lang naman yun, okay? Wala namang, um, wala namang something negative from that. Pero yun lang, you, na dapat sana, Uh, pagdating mo doon, mag-check in ka na lang, di ba? Pero medyo mapapatagal pa kasi hindi mo tinik yung advantage of using the technology. So, yun. So, these are the high-tech and high-touch travelers. Okay? So, yun. So, can you um, share on the comment section um, who are you? Who do you think you are? Um, spillovers? Are you an opportunity seekers? Compensators? Or you are, uh, you are Luddites? Alright? Next is Okay, so these are the methods that we are going to use to understand the digital tourists. Okay, we can use quantitative and qualitative sources. So if you are doing a research, alam nyo naman, <laughs> ang ibig sabihin ng quantitative and qualitative uh, sources or qualitative way of doing a research. So sa quantitative, we can use traditional surveys. Ngayon, we can use online surveys or polls, so G forms, type form, um, Survey Monkey, so you can use that. Web analytics, experiments, visitor tracking, and biometrics. So you can use the following to have or to get quantities. Okay, to research about quantities. How about mixed method, ma'am? You mixed method, magkahadong quantity and quality. Content analysis, what is a content analysis or this content research? It's a tool that we use to determine the presence of certain words themes or concepts within some given qualitative data. So you are given a qualitative data and then you're going to um, uh, to determine the some words from that or theme or concept from that. So you will learn the content. Using content analysis, researchers can quantify and analyze the presence, meanings, and relationships of such certain words, themes, or concepts. So you can learn all of the content of that particular um, thing that you are researching about. Okay. How about sentiment analysis? Sentiment analysis often performed on textual data to help businesses monitor brand and product sentiment in customer feedback and understand customer needs. So ang sentiment analysis, ano ba yung sentimiento nila about this particular industry muna? About this particular brand? about this particular, ano bang feedback nila about this particular one. So, yun, so those are sentiment analysis. Next is the data mining, which is, and from the word mining, data mining. So, yun, yun, this is a process that we use to extract usable data from a larger set of any raw data. So, yun, so that is under the mixed methods sources. How about the qualitative sources? So ma'am, ano naman ang ginagawa when it comes to um, to get qualitative um, uh, to qualitative way of getting the data? So yun, so we have interviews. Yan, syempre, for you to get some um, information, di ba? In the quantitative, it's survey. So walang interaction. But in qualitative, we do interviews. So, we interview the digital tourist na about whatever topic that we are researching about. Focus groups. So, pwedeng, alimbawa, sa Facebook kasi may DIY travel. Ayan. So, you can go there and then see, observe, what are they, what did, or what do they do. Ayan, to learn from them. Netnography. So, what is this? Netnography is an online research method. It originates from ethnography. So, it is understanding social interaction in contemporary digital communication context. So, in ethnography, this is a specific set of research practices na related to data collection online, 
research ethics, and representation rooted in participant observation. So, yeah, so we also have observation and prototyping. So this is um, qualitative sources. So again, we can use the following to understand the digital tourists. How do they behave? Anong gusto nila? Um, paano ka mag-cope up sa gusto ng masa? Kasi yun naman talaga, di ba, kapag ka business ka, so you have to um, keep yourself up doon sa kung ano yung trend, di ba? So yun, so you can use the following sources or following ways, pwedeng quantitative, pwedeng qualitative, or pwedeng mixed method for understanding them. Okay, so those are, that's all for our topic for our part two in the digital tourism landscape. I hope you learned a lot in this lesson. And if you have a um, suggested topic, so you can write it down on the comment section. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you on my next video lessons.